And then I want, and then I'm going to ask you to find your voice. You have the right to speak your truth. And then I'm going to ask you to move into a peaceful state of consciousness in this moment. Because right now, we're not fighting each other. We're not having to protect ourselves. We could move into peace. You've got to know what peace feels like in your body in order to cultivate it enough to carry it around and use it as an instrument to move things, move the arrow of justice in the right direction. So I'm going to invite you to think about a thing that you're grateful for, even in the midst of all the poly crisis. And I think I'll, for each question, I'll take a show of hands. Uh, can we go into breakout I can, rooms now? I can put them in breakout rooms now. Yes, okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right, thank so you. So give Tim. them your question and, and then- So the, the question is, what are you grateful for right now? And what is breaking your heart? Those who answered those two questions, you'll have three minutes apiece to answer those two questions. And we're going to go into, uh, please mute yourself. We're going to go into uh, uh, pairs. Okay. Pairs? Yeah. Pair, just pairs. Yeah, just pairs. How about threes? Oh, you got that already? That's fine. So that means that's going to be... Uh, I can do pairs. I, I just, um, I'll do okay. pairs. Okay. Just hoping everyone, I might have to move you if I yes, see somebody not getting in a room. Can you, can you make me co-host too now? You are. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. So I'm moving you into rooms with pairs and I might have to move you if somebody's not showing up. Well, we're happy to help. Anyway. There you go. All right. What are you grateful for? And what is breaking your heart? Thank you. All right, we're going to need everyone to mute. I know it's so much fun to be with each other. So how was that to be able to tell somebody how you're feeling, what you're grateful for? Now, in the work that reconnects, which is a body of work that was started with nuclear for nuclear activists that went to climate change and now we are decolonizing the work and bringing social justice issues into it. We say that gratitude is a revolutionary act. There's so much to be complaining about. There's so much to be sad about and, and fear about. But if you stay in the those emotions, it will just wear you down. So it's a subversive. It's against the norm to be in gratitude. So it's important that you understand the way that the mind works. The mind can't be in gratitude and grief at the same time. So if you wanna give yourself a break from all of the trouble the sadness, the pain, stay in gratitude. Even if it's only for a glass of water or the very ne next breath that you breathe. And there is this, there's a like, okay, you're, you're tired of this world. You're mad as hell. You want to go, you hold your breath and life wants to keep living. <laughs> It wants to keep living. So I like the idea in the peace economy about the, uh, the seed. 
Jody, say a little bit about the vital seed. Well, I mean, that, you know, we are seeding the future and, and we, uh, it's that space of like, even in this moment, taking ownership for that, um, that in the toxicity that we live inside of, the healthiness, the seed of possibility, which you spoke about earlier, like being that seed for the future, being that seed for social justice, being that seed for peace. If we are not that seed, you know, what, what, where will it come from? And yes. to see ourselves as the, as the act of always in the seeding, um, because also in seeding, when you plant a seed, you have to, it, you have to be patient. Um, you have to allow it to grow as it wants to grow. You can't, you know, it's like you have to nourish it. It, it then brings forward all the things that also you need to do for it to be healthy and grow and be supported and cared for. And so it's not, it's just the seeding then brings forth more and more behaviors that create the healthy communities, cultures, um, environments that we're looking for. Yes. Um, so in seeding, we're drawn to even more, like, how do I meet this and not, uh, and it helps us out of our, in you know, our expectations into our wonder, I always think. <laughs> nice, nice, nice. So I'm going to invite you to start seeding what you really want to see happen in terms of moving away from war into a peace economy. But I'm also going to ask you to be a good gardener. So you don't plant the seed and then not water it. You don't plant the seed and then dig it up to see if the roots are growing. You, there's an amount of faith that you have to be to be a good gardener. And one of the things you have to do is you have to weed so that the baby roots don't get choked out. So the question is, what do we individually and collectively need to weed out of our gardens? And I'm going to use the, gar the metaphor for garden right now for our minds so that we can actually move towards peace. What, do you, what weeds do you need to pull out of your consciousness, out of your mind, in order to actually plant a seed that's going to be vital, that's actually going to grow? And one of the reasons why I, I want you to think about that question. And one of those, one of the reasons why that question is so important is that if we don't weed out powerlessness, then we're just in fantasy that we're going to do something. And we've all been programmed to be powerless, to live in blame, shame, and guilt, which are the emotions that it's like poison onto a, a new seed that's being planted. So it's very difficult oftentimes to not be gripped with blame, shame, and guilt. But as soon as you're in blame, in shame, or in guilt, you're being hijacked. You're being hijacked. So one of the things I think, um, I want to tell this story. I wonder why this story is coming up. It came up um, just the other day again. So um, I'm at, I have an international development uh, facilitation development program for the work that reconnects. And last year, right after October the 7th, we had our second, uh, it's a six months program. We had our second webinar. And the facilitators and I decided that we really needed to make a statement, like, even though it was the first time I had even heard about it, that we couldn't just pretend like we hadn't heard it, that it didn't happen. And so I wrote something and I wrote something really humanitarian that, you know, we wish for all beings not to be suffering. And we understand that hurt people hurt people and we want everybody to heal so that we can stop harming. And there was a young woman who couldn't figure out where I was coming from. So she was in the breakout rooms and she was crying and she was saying, 
um, she was feeling unsafe because of my words and blah, blah. And so the other facilitators asked her to stay so that she could talk to me about how she was feeling. So at the end of the workshop, we stayed on for a few minutes and she came and she was crying and I don't understand what you said. And, 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 and I said, if you knew my history, and I'm saying it to you guys, if you really understood the history of my people, in the United States, then you would know where, what side I'm for. You would automatically know that freedom is important, that to, to pretend that we're free, where the, un, the, un, un, the uh, inequities are so vast that it's not right. So that the divide really is because we're living with myths and lies about who's worthy. Every human being is worthy. And everywhere you go in the world now, white, if you're white, you're all right. If you're yellow, you're mellow. If you're brown, you can stick around. But if you're black, you better get back. So one of the things that I do and the work that I carry is about awakening to love. How do you begin to love someone who is completely different from you in skin tone, in class? We, we've really divided upon a myth that one race is more superior to another, and all of us are bought into it. And if you are thinking right now, oh, that's not me, I am surprised half the time at some of the stuff that goes through my mind. So we got to have to face that. It's like we want to move forward, but we have these barriers the way that we hold ourselves and want to be comfortable. Well, if there's anything that you want from yourself and you don't want it from, you don't want it for anybody else, we're, we, we, you probably are going to have to give up the right to have it. Because there is definitely enough for, the earth is producing enough. There's enough land, there's enough shelter, there's enough food, but we are in this war mentality that we have to take it from other people in order to be satisfied. And there, those of us who really understand that for peace to be possible, human rights have to be met. So I feel like I'm preaching to the choir. <laughs> 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 and so I want I want to give us the opportunity to really begin to look at what is your social location because the work that reconnects has the spiral and um over the last 10 years there's been a lot of harm with it going out into the world because people weren't finding their own selves in the narratives so the book now there's a whole rewrite of the work to make it a more global appeal and there's been some steps added to the spiral and one of them is what blood flows through your veins and what has happened in the united states is when the myth of whiteness came up the immigrants the italians the germans the uh, uh, everybody else, all white, went into a melting pot and became white and lost cultural norms, traditions. And in my work, and I've been doing diversity and uh, inclusion work for over 30 years now, I used to get called into organizations where People were upset 
and it was there was white folks and black folks were upset because the Mexicans and the Chinese or the Koreans were talking in their language at lunchtime. They were so sure that they were being talked about. So I would get call in I, and I was like, OK, well, I'll meet with them. What are you talking about at lunchtime? Oh, our kids, soccer, the recipes. But there's this fear thing that goes along with the war mentality. And what we have to see is the first war we have to stop having is the one with ourselves. Fatima, that is exactly um, where I think we need to be today is yeah. um, when, you know, I'm so happy that you are with us today because of what today is. And it is this transformational moment. Yeah. And that it really does. We've been, as they say, we've been thrown back on ourselves. <laughs> mm -hmm. And here you are bringing us back to ourselves and not ourselves in the, in the individualistic way, but in ourselves in the self-responsible way. Yes. And I think, you know, that's one of the transitions in from the war economy to the peace economy is from individualism to self-responsibility. And I think one of the diseases of individualism is racism. It's that sense of not having, not being able to feel your full humanity. So, um, as Alice Walker says, being envious of those with the culture that you don't have, with the ground you don't have, with the rootings that you don't have, that might be what is really at the root of, of racism. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um, and we're, you know, here we are all suffering, as we've seen in the chat, from the racism that is the war on Gaza. Mm -hmm. um, but it is clearly racism and it is clearly white supremacy and it is clearly, you know, uh, imperialism, capitalism, colonialism, these words that we use are, are rooted in the white yeah. <laughs> power structure that is devoid of culture yeah. and devoid of, and steals all those things, steals life and and what is life from those that are that are that have it and so you know because we only have a few minutes left i want to just let um, me say something before you you say yeah. what you're going to say so in the chat tina is saying that she doesn't feel like doing the holidays what if we didn't do the holidays <laughs> let's cancel all of the bullshit. it's hoopla it's only about money let's 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 make a, a pack between us we will not buy turkeys we will not buy presents and if you just got to spend your money send it to gaza <laughs> and come april don't you dare pay your taxes if you if you feel like you can't withhold them because you know they're going to come after us and we're so afraid of them just withhold the percent that they're putting out for military listen i am serious i do not want any blood more blood on my hands my right, well, we, yeah. um thank you um so i think there we are um Mutima, you have given us clear acts, you know, and I, you know, I want to say I was in Ferguson and one of the things when I was working in Ferguson um, was that they all stopped Christmas and Thanksgiving. And mm -hmm. do you know, they were all happier, more fulfilled, more connected. Yeah. What these ritual rituals of culture were supposed to do finally happened. Yes. So let's like, let's peace economy the holidays. Let's have that. Yes. Things we were <laughs> And let's try to get every organization we know to do it because it's just money making right now. It has nothing to do with the father, the son, and the Holy Ghost, or the mother, the goddess, and the daughter. So I, I just want to say this. I'm gonna. These are my closing remarks. When you're feeling your fear, if you want to get rid of your fear, you gotta lean to to know that your fear is the measure of your courage. If you're in grief, it's the measure of your love. So
So we're not running away from how we feel. We're understanding that to the depth of your despair means something new needs to grow. And it can begin with you. So thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much for this time. Thank you for what you believe in. And, you know, if you do your own ancestral stuff, you're going to find them sitting around a fire singing songs. <laughs> so thank Akima, you. We have to have you back. We're going to have you back with too much. <laughs> There's too much here that we we, we just got to taste. Uh, um, but tastes, you know, we, we have to take the taste and then do the work and then come back for more. Okay, so great. We will, we will come back for more. Thank you so much. Thank you all of you for for joining with us. Um, I I want to like um, come back to the the gallery view so everyone can see each other. Uh, I'm, oh, I'm you had your pen. I see, I'm seeing everybody. All right. <laughs> <There we> go. <laughs> oh, thank you for all the tax information. Uh, <laughs> thank you, thank you. you oh. We've got us. We've got <laughs> us. Yes. And we are enough. We're more than enough when 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 not distracted by war economy bullshit. Yeah. So um, thank you to all of you who came. Marie will be able to send you um, some goodies. Remember on the listserv, you can share ways to not pay your taxes. Um, you can just put it in escrow and not send it in. The ones that go to war, there's all kinds of wonderful things we can be doing together, including sharing ideas about how to redo the holidays. And um, next time we come together, we're going to talk about culture, which thank you, Mutima, like, you know, spoke to, which is the absence of culture is what is at the root of, of, of violence, um, because culture holds those spaces inside of us um, that uh, are uncomfortable and, and those rituals are super important. And they've come down for millennia, millennia and they've been destroyed. So culture is super important and it's also another place where it's up to us to recultivate. Yeah. Um, so you've given us a lot to work with, Mutima. Thank you. <laughs> on this day where we need our attentions redirected yeah. to cultivating a more beautiful future. Yeah. Um, which yeah. Marie, you know, brought up in the early, the more beautiful future that we all are here to recreate together. So deepest gratitude to everyone. Welcome, Marie, to holding our team together. Beautiful time together. Thank you so much. And we'll see you in a couple of weeks. And don't forget to save the chat. I'm going to save it right now so I can have all that tax information. <laughs> Free Palestine. <laughs> Free Palestine. Justice for Palestine. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.